I'm Andrew King, Assistant Professor of Biblical Studies at Midwestern Seminary and Spurgeon College in Kansas City, Missouri, and co-director of Every Voice, a Center for Kingdom Diversity and Christian Theological Education. Dr. Andrew King. Andrew, welcome to Exegetically Speaking. Thanks for having me, David. You've heard our podcast before. I'm a big fan. Yes, this is a, a bucket list item for well, me. <laughs> well, good. Well, now, now, like you said earlier, you can just retire and say, hey, I've done it all. I've peaked. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a Hebrew guy. Tell us, how did you get started reading and studying Hebrew? Yeah, it's a great question, David. Um, I came to faith my junior year of college, so I was kind of thrown into the fire of studying the Bible uh, with very little knowledge about what the Bible actually is. So I just started reading my English Bible a lot as a new Christian, a lot of apologetics concerns, all of these kind of things. When I was graduating college, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, so seminary was kind of uh, something that was suggested to me. And I was just blown away that there were places that you could go to study the Bible like full time. Now, like, I didn't know places <laughs> like that existed. Yeah, we do exist. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, and it, so it was all new to me. I was taking it all in. And I just loved reading the Bible, loved reading it carefully. Uh, and as I was interacting with commentaries and other ideas, I started to see a lot of things from the biblical languages that I was reading, but couldn't really get my head around. Mm. And part of my seminary training was taking Greek and Hebrew. Uh, so as I did that, I learned that it really opened up God's word in a way that I could read it slower mm. and more carefully and seek to be more faithful and more fruitful in ministry. Uh, so from there, it just took on a life of its own of just wanting to study the Bible well to serve the people of God around the world. So you studied it at seminary, but d when you went on to do your PhD, you had to use it as well, right? That's right. Yeah, you're asking the, the hard questions at that, that level, uh, and you're really dealing with the text. And, and I learned very quickly that bad arguments don't go very far mm. uh, when you're presenting at academic conferences and conference papers uh, and seminar papers and dissertation chapters. So I got a lot of feedback from my readers uh, about my chapters, and it really helped me to think more textually. Hmm. Uh, so going back to the original languages, digging in and seeing, okay, what is this text saying uh, and how can I faithfully interpret it? And then so you're weighing decisions. You have to make interpretive decisions. And so much of that is how we understand what the language of the text is communicating. Hmm. Well, today we're going to look carefully uh, with your help at Hosea chapter 1, verse 2 in the Hebrew. So let's t take us into that, uh, Andrew. What are we looking at here? What's going on in the text? Yeah, so Hosea is one of those books that in popular imagination, everybody knows Hosea. Uh, there's books written about it. There's romantic love stories that are told about Hosea. And so much of that kind of takes on a life of its own within popular imagination. And where does that come from? The marriage motif uh, is a theme that shows up in Hosea. And uh, I want to look at Hosea 1-2 today, uh, which I've got the NIV here. And this mm. is how the NIV reads. It says, when the Lord began to speak through Hosea, the Lord said to him, go marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. For like an adulterous wife, this land is guilty of unfaithfulness to the Lord. Mm. So this is Hosea's commission. This is what God is telling him to do as a prophet. And there's a lot of things that we could talk about uh, sure. here. And the, the one that, get, that gets the most exposure is what is a promiscuous woman, the NIV's language mm. here. What does that mean? But what I want to look at today is the second part of this commission where Hosea is told in the, in the NIV to marry a promiscuous woman and have children with her. I want to look at that latter phrase, have mm. children with her. Okay. Uh, so that's the English reading here. If you're looking at a Hebrew text, what we actually have here grammatically is one verb, lakak, to take, mm. with two objects. Mm. Take 
a wife, then we have the word and, yeah. a wife of a promiscuous woman, wife of whoredom, yeah. translated different ways. Then we have the word and, and then children of whoredom. Ah, so okay. one verb and two objects, wife and children. And so what the NIV does is they make the interpretive decision that the commission is to marry a wife, the word lakak, to take a wife, that's just legal language for marriage mm -hmm. uh, in Hebrew, but then they transition. So you take a wife and then they insert and have children with her, mm -hmm. where it really mm -hmm. just says, and take children as well. Uh, so I read that and I started, I started asking myself, okay, what's, what's going on with there? You know, why is that? translation, you know, why was that decision made? Uh, as I started to explore, I saw that this, this phrase to take children shows up in Mesopotamian documents, other, other places in adoption contracts. Ah. So to take a child is uh, in some places uh, phrasing for legal adoption. Mm. So I started mm. to consider, all right, would that work here? So as we look in the biblical text, a parallel maybe that we see to that kind of phrasing uh, shows up in Esther, in Esther 2, where Mordecai, it says that Esther's father and mother had died. And when they died, Esther 2.7 says that Mordecai took, Lakach, took her hmm. as his own daughter. Hmm. So he, he adopts her uh, as his own daughter. So I think what we're looking at with the commission to Hosea and Hosea 1.2 is not just about marriage. And then children later on down the road. Hmm. I think what we have here is a commission for a complex sign act that involves marriage to, in, in my view, a woman that has a reputation for uh, immorality that's public. Hmm. And as a result, she has children from previous relationships. So she already Hosea, has children. I see. Okay. She already has children in my view. She already has children and Hosea is to go marry that woman and to adopt those children. And what we see in the rest of the chapter is children that are born to Hosea and Gomer. Uh, so when the first child is born, in my view, I think there's already children in the household. Mm. So I mm. think the, the metaphor that we see here is not just of marriage, but is of household from the very beginning. Hmm. And all of that is, as the text says, to show the unfaithfulness of what's going on in the land. So household from the very beginning. And that makes sense. I mean, all of chapter one, it's not really about marriage at all. You get into the children that are born. So the children motif is a really prominent thing in chapter one in general. Uh, so we see here that he is marrying, that he's adopting children, that there's a blended family from day one. And all of that is part of this public sign act to show uh, that, you know, the people of Israel are estranged from God. And in God's kind providence, all of that gets reversed. All of the names of the children that are unfold in, in chapter one are all reversed. And at the end, brothers and sisters are to call to each other and to announce God's mercy in Hosea 2.1 uh, mm. in the English. Mm. So God is really merciful and he's gracious and reverses every estrangement from the household of God. That's a fascinating reading of, of Hosea chapter 1, verse 2, and what's happening throughout the book. Wonderfully done, Andrew. Thank you for being with us today on Exegetically Speaking. Thanks for having me, David. If you learn too much today and your head is hurting, there's one sure cure. That is to share this podcast with a friend. We hope you've enjoyed Exegetically Speaking. If you have never visited Wheaton College, I hope you'll make plans to do so. We have a wonderful campus year around. And if biblical languages are your fancy, check out our MA and BA programs at Wheaton College. Wheaton.edu. Look for modern and classical languages. That's the best place to get started. If you have comments, you have questions, you just want to be in touch, please email us at exegetically.speaking at Wheaton.edu. Thanks for all those who make this possible. You know who you are. Until next time, thanks for listening.